Internet for Africa and the world is happy to welcome today in our studio the Charge the Affairs AI of the Nigerian Embassy Tokyo, Japan. Your Excellency, you're highly welcome today Thank in our studio. Thank you very much. We, we are really very, very happy to have you to at least uh, inform you and also to ask a few questions concerning what is bothering Nigerians and uh, inform you more of how Nigerian citizens and particularly other Africans are doing in Japan. You're highly welcome Thank today, you. Your Excellency. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation. I'm honored to. Thank you. <laughs> um, we, first and foremost, let us congratulate you for your pos new position as the chart the affairs of our embassy. We are really very happy to have you and be willing to serve you, give you every support you need to run the affairs or so run our affairs. Um, I know you have you are a man of integrity and you have a lot of portfolios. You have a lot of things in your cupboard. That's why I didn't want to introduce you. Of course, I know you are Dr. Tokwe uh, Elias Fatile, um, but it's not enough for our audience, <laughs> worldwide audience, to know exactly who you are. Could you please introduce yourself to our worldwide audience? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chief. I want to start by thanking you for inviting me to be part of this program. And uh, let me begin by thanking you for the good work you are doing in Japan, for making us proud, and uh, your capacity as the president of Nigeria, you know, in Japan. We are always happy and we appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Uh, for giving Nigerians good image in this country. We're, we're grateful. Uh, arigato. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, having said that, um, if you ask me to introduce myself, I would like to look at it maybe professionally. Yes. Uh, so let me restrict myself to the diplomatic uh, <laughs> circle. Yeah. Okay, okay. Whichever way you want. Yes. Because outside the diplomatic circle, I have other things, as you may have known. Yes. Uh, I'm an ordained priest of the Anglican Church. Uh, yes. But let me restrict myself to, to, the, to the diplomatic, diplomatic. part of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, um, I schooled in Nigeria, had my first degree in University of Illinois. Uh, I think it should be close to, to how many years ago? Well, that's not part of the question, though. Yeah. Uh, but but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a begin, it's a good uh, beginning. Uh, it should be 30 years or more, <laughs> or more. Or more by now, by the grace of God. Yeah. Um, and then had my master's in the OAU, IFE. IFE, okay. Uh, and then had my PhD in France. Oh, really? Uh, Good. My master's in international relations and then my PhD in international relations and diplomacy. Okay. And then professionally, I've attended a series of professional courses, some by United Nations in Switzerland, uh, in New York. In fact, a series of such in New York. Okay. And um, even some courses in New York University and the Peace Institute and so on and so forth. Um, now, back to the, the career, my career as a diplomat, by the grace of God, I've been in the system now, spanning over two decades or so. Okay. As long as you are, so you joined the, you joined the whole <laughs> thing. Am I young? I'm over 50. Oh, uh, you're very young. The same, I guess. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, when you are fifty and above, do you say you well, we thank God. We, we thank God. God. Yes, we thank, we thank God. God. With good health, of yeah, course. We thank God. Yeah, we yeah. thank God. Yes. Uh, and so, um, I started. Let me focus. Okay, let me look into both both my postings in Nigeria yeah. and my foreign postings. Exactly. Um, I started in admin department in charge of posting section. And then left there for my foreign service academy. It was a professional course you must attend yeah. as a Nigerian diplomat. As a career diplomat. As a career, yes, a career yeah. diplomat in yeah. the Nigerian foreign service. Yes. And that was said in Lagos. It's called Foreign Service Academy. Yeah. Uh, you must pass it. It's both professional and at the same time it's, it has intellectual content. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. And then from there, I returned posted back to headquarters in Abuja and uh, had my first posting, so to say, 
um, it's, it was a posting that has dua uh, area of coverage, okay. both in Nigeria okay. and outside the country. Oh, where, where was your first post? That was uh, Israel, yeah. Tel Aviv. Oh, Tel Aviv. Uh, oh, Tel really? Aviv. So how many years did you stay there? Um, like I said, it's dua because okay. we were in charge of uh, pilgrims. Oh, okay. To Israel, to the Holy Land. From from, from Nigeria. From Nigeria. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Conduct okay. a consular C work for them. Pilgrims? Welfare. Not only Catholic, anybody, anybody, yes. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, welfare, pilgrims, and uh, consular work, and so many other things. Yeah. Uh, coordinating the whole thing all over the country. In fact, uh, it was then called Directorate of Pilgrims Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. All right. Uh, so we have that under that directorate, uh, the I, Christian I only, section. I only know about the pilgrimage to Mecca. I, I, okay, I no, yes, I federal government. The, the one in Israel. No, federal government. Federal government have. have. Yeah, so even now it's a, it's a full commission now. Huh? Because okay. uh, when we were there, it was transforming to full commission. We prepared the grants for for, for, for it, uh, it to become a full, a full commission. commission, which it is today. Okay. Mm, and so we had offices in Nigeria and at the same time in Tel Aviv. Okay. Uh, so after conducting the Nigerian component of the arrangement, yes. preparing them, we we'll go to Tel Aviv to prepare grants over there. Okay. And then we also travel with them, come back, travel with them, you know, like that. So it was um, going for back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so after that first posting, Tel Aviv, and then my second posting was to Paris, okay. France. So you've been, you know, Opportune to be visiting major major countries uh, from well, your first position to. Well, we just thank God for the opportunity God has given God us. Has given. Uh, <laughs> okay. Because without God, I'm nothing. Yeah, I understand. Yes. All of us, not. Yes. I, I, mean, I think the plurality should come in there. We are nothing. We are nothing exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I was in Paris and the France Embassy of Nigeria, Paris. Uh, I still remember Avenue Vitongo. Okay. Let, let us know the, the, what brought you to Japan. I mean, uh, yes, of course, we know you have, you must have visited many, mm. you know, countries. Uh, I mean, your your curriculum vitae might take us two days to, you I know, know to attend say. if you want to get out <laughs> So, let, well, let, let me yeah, just so, finish it off so that uh, yeah. I will not stop halfway. Yeah, you're right, um, you're right. Since you asked me about you're that aspect. Yeah, yeah, it's important. Um, yeah. So, from there, I returned to Nigeria. Okay. And then served as a special assistant, uh, first special assistant economics in the office of the president at the presidential villa in Abuja. Okay. And then later they changed so me you have, to you have eaten special them there. assistant <laughs> uh, foreign affairs okay. and international relations. Oh, really? Uh, and so I was, I worked with uh, President Yaradwa. Okay. Uh, of uh, pleasant memory. Memory, yeah. And later I worked with. Uh, his Excellency President uh, Jonathan, uh, below Jonathan. Okay. I was uh, working on foreign affairs desk uh, through the chief of staff to the president. Okay. And uh, from there, I was posted to the permanent mission of Nigeria to the United Nations in uh, New York. Wow. Uh, okay. Where I had, a, a, let me say, a brilliant and fulfilling career as a diplomat. You see, New York, United Nations is the headquarters of diplomacy, if you want to say that. In terms yeah, I, of think, where I think so. All yeah. countries all converge. Countries convert to now, I mean, use politics as a battle of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think I was well exposed to the world of diplomacy in New York. Okay. My ambassador gave me some very tasking assignment that I had to be representing Nigeria at the General Assembly. Oh, that wow. is where all the the whole thing happens. Yes, um, the uh, so world that comes time together there were 193 to... countries of the world. <laughs> the world yes. And so I sit on Nigerian desk to represent Nigeria, and uh, speak on behalf of Nigeria when necessary, yeah. and defend our interests. Yeah. And yeah. it was yes. it was such a Herculean task. But uh, you see, God in His mercy and through the assistance of the Holy Spirit, I was able to maneuver my yeah, way. A lot of even during task. the time I was the chairman of uh, the 75th. Anniversary of uh, the United Nations. Wow, that is the process. You yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's called a, it's called facilitator. You facilitate yeah, the, yeah, exactly. the process of discussion. How how everything to, yes, to celebrate it, and mm. uh, it was the height of um, the experience. But without God, it worked well, worked out well. 
From there, I returned to Nigeria. Okay. And then in Nigeria, I was made the spokesperson of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abuja. Wow. And as spokesperson, it was also another hercule task. Yes. You know what it means wow. to speak on behalf of uh, the ministry and then extension on behalf of the federal government on a number of issues. Uh, it was a period of sleeplessness. Yes, because, because I have to be covering what is happening all over the world yes. and be on top of issues. And report back to you. Yeah, the to advise where the crisis is and so that we'll be, uh, we'll be able to handle it. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was rather tough, but uh, we thank God. It prepared you again for uh, another. And then here I am <laughs> in uh, Embassy in of Nigeria, Tokyo, Tokyo Japan. Japan. Uh, so it's been a, a fulfilling career by yeah. the grace of God. Don't thank challenge God. it, but uh, we thank God. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much. We discovered you have a, a solid uh, background in the private sector. You're not a career diplomat, I'm sure of that. You're from the private sector to, uh, to join diplomacy. Well, what made you leave the private sector to choose diplomacy? Because I know this diplomatic thing, you know, it's very difficult to for people from the business sector to join diplomats because our own diplomatic ways might be different from what the diplo the career diplomats think. What made you choose this field? Is well, let me people? first of all correct the notion that I'm I'm from the private sector. Ah, okay, okay, from I'm the not, government. I'm government. Not, I'm not from the private sector. Okay, okay, okay. But, uh, I worked in uh, so many places. Yes, in the government. Including, yes, exactly. Including private sector. Okay. But. Uh, I started uh, as a teacher, and I was teaching in public schools, not private schools. That's a government home. I know. And, uh, so you were a teacher? Uh, all before. alone. I was a teacher. I My was, father used I to be a teacher too. I became a principal. I was a principal at one time in one of the secondary schools. Wow. And uh, I came back. Six I, as my I father. I was uh, uh, in the mm. government cycle. I was working and uh, at a level, you know, after... I graduated, at, at, I came back, okay. and uh, at the time I was uh, seconded to go and work uh, uh, in a cement company of Northern Nigeria, okay. uh, yeah. the manufacturers of Sokoto Cement. Yes, yeah, so that was in, that was in 1989. I was candid there to take up an appointment there as a, as a marketing manager. And uh, uh, that was so because uh, that company was owned by federal government yeah. and uh, about uh, six, five or, five or six other northern state governments, you know, including my own state government, Zampara State, or Sokoto State there, because uh, then Zampara State was not created. In 1989, I was candidate to go and take up that appointment. And I was there in the cement company of northern Nigeria for 10 years. Wow. So I walked in between uh, 1989 to 1999, and I rose up to the position of uh, uh, a divisional head, okay. an assistant general manager okay. in charge of commercial division, and I was a member of the management committee of exactly. the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 1999, that is exactly after about 10 years, so uh, uh, when politics, you know, when uh, uh, the democratic government was... Uh, uh, instituted, Re -re -instituted you know, yes, in 1999, yeah. I was called from that cement company to come and take up an appointment as a commissioner. Okay. So I was there from 1999 to 2003 as a commissioner of finance first. Then from finance I was moved to uh, works and housing. From works and housing I was uh, moved to budget and economic planning and later on to water resources. But in 2003, when the election for the second term was uh, yeah. again, uh, I was appointed as secretary to the state government, SSG, SSG. of the state. Oh, okay. uh, the position I was holding in between 2003 to 2007. And uh, uh, so you can see I have been working all along. Yeah, exactly. From the government, from the government the to public the sector. public sector, yes. And uh, in uh, in two thousand, in between two thousand and seven to two thousand and fifteen, I was also working in one 
doing one thing or another, but all for the government. Even for the government, yes. All for giving a technical advice, including even a special advisor to the governor yeah. on special assignments. Assignment, yes, exactly. And I was holding also, uh, at the time I was exec I was appointed as an executive uh, chairman of uh, a, you know, a cotton development uh, 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 agency. Yeah. You know, the state government came up with a cotton development agency to promote the development of uh, cotton, you know, production, marketing, and the processing of cotton in the state. So I was put to, to be in charge. So of you've that. been in all this role, and, yes. Uh, uh, in uh, 2015, uh, my people also, you know, my people around me uh, invited me to come and contest, you know, for an elected position. Yes. And that is uh, into the National Assembly, National Assembly the yeah. Federal House of Representatives. Representative, yes. So I contested uh, in 2015 and I won election and uh, I moved to the House of Representatives to, to represent, you know, my constituency. Yeah, constituency, yeah, exactly. of uh, Zurimi and the Shinkafi local government areas. And uh, that took me up to 2019. Okay. And uh, within that period, I was uh, appointed as a chairman of the House Committee on Industry. So uh, the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment was uh, under the purview of my committee, along with uh, its uh, parastatus, including SOM, including Bank of Industry, including ITF, including Semedan, including so many other parastatus under the Federal Ministry of Industry. And that job I was doing for four years. So, uh, and, uh, uh, in 2019, we participated also in election. We won election. We are about to be sworn in, only to experience and to witness uh, uh, another court problem. Yeah. So the court uh, stopped all our mandate and gave it to PDP, right from the councillorship to the government. <laughs> okay. That was in 2019. 19 years. Yes. But uh, we took faith and uh, we took it in good uh, faith. Yeah. And that what God destined, you know, that was uh, the faith of uh, uh, the faith of uh, the APC. Exactly, yeah, exactly. All contested under APC from the governorship to the House of Assembly, and that mandates, were, you know, those mandates were all taken and given to PDP. PDP, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't want to dwell too much. No, you don't have to. <laughs> but, uh, don't worry. And uh, yeah. uh, in 2020, that is exactly after about one year. And uh, his, his Excellency, the President, President Muhammad Buhari, yeah. you know, uh, after due consultation, appointed me uh, as a non career ambassador. And uh, God, in his own wisdom, I was appointed to, and I was posted to Japan. Yeah. So you can see, I although mean, I worked mm, for private sector, yeah. but that does not <laughs> mean that uh, I was, a, I was uh, from private sector. I understand. Yes. I really understand. Yes. Um, so all along, I have been with the government. With the government and, and with the yes. government and so on. Um, the reality is, listening to your career, uh, should I say, brief curriculum vita, um, in Japan, someone who works in a company for over two, three years is a good person. They believe if you are, if you're looking for a new job and if you go to another company mm -hmm. and they ask, and they ask you, um, how many years did you spend in the last company where you were? And you say, ah, one year. <laughs> You're losing that job. But from your career, look at the years, 10 years, 4 years, 5 years. You are patient. You are a teacher. I'm a son of a teacher. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, a chief of the old block. Mm -hmm. Because teachers are very resilient and patient. Their salaries are very poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't know if it is the same everywhere in the world. But I mean... In that part of Africa, the or Nigeria in particular, teacher salaries are very, very poor. But they have have been teaching children. So from teaching, you start rank, rising from you know ranks to this level. Mm -hmm. I, I say hearty congratulations. Thank you very much. Yes, to be honest. <laughs> As a son of a teacher, I know what teachers understand and what teachers do. My mother is a teacher, my father is a teacher, a headmaster, a special class actually. Mm -hmm. Nobody believes son of teachers in Africa can rise to a certain level. But look at we and look at you as a teacher. <laughs> Most of the people... I was a trained teacher. Yes, yes my I, father, a trained I, teacher too, I, yes. I, I started with uh, 
Advanced Teachers College. I know. <laughs> I graduated was my NC. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I understand and, uh, how he started there. Even the, even the undergraduate study I did at Ahmad Bella University. University, yes. In marketing management, it is a Bachelor of Business Education. So I was a trained teacher, and that was why I was appointed as a principal of a secondary school. Yes. But uh, somehow, somewhere, I cross over to administration, I cross over to politics, I cross over to diplomacy now. <laughs> Ambition debt must be paid. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to push more, more further, whether you're a businessman or a career diplomat or not, but your career is, uh, is really wonderful. Yeah. Let me not take more time there. Um, you have succeeded in visiting many captains of industries yeah. and even government, you know, agency leaders yeah. within the short space of uh, time of your tour of duty. I mean, how were you able to to create these contacts and you know start flowing so freely like this? I mean, yeah, you see, uh, right from the time of our induction, from the time when we were appointed as ambassadors. Uh, we were given the charter, we were given a charter, meaning to say, you know, what we are necessarily going to emphasize, what we are necessarily going to do in order to achieve uh, the, goals. Uh, the mandate, mandate you know, expected yes. of us. So keeping in mind the content of the charter of uh, Nigeria-Japan uh, relations, uh, when I arrived here in June, I... Uh, uh, I made it a duty and uh, I made it as my aspiration first to see that the type of uh, bilateral relations in all ramifications, economic, trade, investment, that I met, you know, on ground between Japan and Nigeria, Nigeria yes. I will aspire to move it to a higher level, to a more desired level. From the level I met it, to a, level, to, to, to a level that everybody will say is more desired. So within that context, you know, I uh, uh, made it a duty knowing fully that Japan is a highly industrialized country and uh, Japan has a lot of uh, advantage in terms of uh, technology. Exactly. Technology in all aspects, you know. So I made it a duty and I drew up an aspiration, keeping in mind the content of the charter, that we should benefit from this higher richness in technology and higher richness in industrialization in Japan. And therefore, Japan has already gone very far. It has exalted in automotive. It has exalted in, in cutting ICT, edge, cutting edge technology. It has uh, exalted in textile. It has exalted in so many many areas, many, many areas, ICT, semiconductors, semiconductors, yes, and the rest of them. So I, after I uh, presented my letters of credence, both the copy the usage and yes. the original copy to His Majesty, then I be I began to uh, reach out, you know. Exactly. Chief executives and leadership of uh, various corporations and uh, various companies, of course, including government platforms that are so critical, yes, so strategic for the uh, realization of my aspiration, and that is the Jetro and uh, the JICA. The JICA, yes, yes. Jetro is a Japanese external trade organization. Organization, you yes. Know, they regulate and coordinate you know, trade and investment across the world. Across the world, between which, Japan and... Between Japan yeah. and those countries. And mm -hmm. you know, Nigeria has a long-standing uh, relations as far as trade is concerned. Yeah. They established the, their first African office in Nigeria, and that is the Jetro office in Lagos. Yes, I, I read that during your comment on independence, uh, yes. Which was established in 1955. 55, yeah. Yes. And uh, so I visited the leadership of uh, Jetro, the president himself, you know, granted audience to me, together with all his uh, divisional heads, and we held a series of discussions. Of course, I made it uh, to for him to know that uh, I also visited the office in Lagos before I even reported for duty here. Okay. That was just to give me an insight about what he made. He made a good research Jetro, before coming. What yes, Jetro, mm -hmm. what all, they are all all yes. And so on. And I also visited the leadership of uh, Jaika. The, uh, the, the the chief executive of JICA, together with all his divisional heads, we held a series of discussions with them. 
first, uh, you know, to appreciate uh, what they have been doing in Nigeria yeah. and uh, to further explore other areas of cooperation, both technical and uh, uh, otherwise. And uh, I think we have come to uh, agreement to understand them that uh, uh, we should move our bilateral relationship in terms of cooperation, technical and the rest of it, from where it is now to a higher level. Yeah. So I create the intelligence that uh, we want us uh, to consolidate. We want us to look for other areas. In as much as uh, they are in uh, humanitarian services, they are in uh, enhancement and the realization of uh, uh, state millennium goals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we now want to broaden up. And I'm happy to note that they have also established that kind of diversification. They are now into try trying to see what can they do in the area of agriculture, yeah. in the area of uh, uh, Microprocessing equipment, you know, yeah, for, yeah. Mm -hmm. for 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 rice, for rice, tomatoes, for tomatoes you know, and the rest of them. Rest of them. Packaging so systems. We have and, yeah. discussed duly with them, and uh, beside that, uh, I also visited uh, a number of uh, other companies, particularly the automotive companies. I visited Toyota. Toyota, the, the chief executive of Toyota, and all his sectional and departmental heads, including even those who are responsible for Africa. Yeah. And uh, some of them were even asked to fly, I mean, uh, to fly back to to Japan so that they can participate in, in that the meeting. meeting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's good. So it, it was a serious meeting with the leadership and uh, as you are aware, Toyota is an important automotive company. Seriously, yes. And uh, they have been, they they have been, one, they have been like in Japan, Nigeria yeah. for so many years. And uh, emphasizing what they are currently doing is uh, uh, assembling of uh, uh, Toyota vehicles and uh, a production of some fabrica I mean, fabrication of some basic components of uh, automotive. But, uh, you know, realizing the fact that uh, Nigeria is also uh, consciously working with uh, a sustainable and efficient plan to uh, move our automotive industry, you know, from where it is to a higher level. A higher level, yes. So we want to see a situation where we produce uh, made in Nigeria made cars, in Nigeria cars yes. made in Nigeria mm -hmm. trucks, trucks, and... Uh, we produce and uh, fabricate all major and, and that will companies. create more jobs. That will create more jobs. So uh, that our discussion instead of important already that, made ones from that overseas. That discussion mm -hmm. featured along those lines between me and the leadership of Toyota. Oh, Toyota. Okay, good. And uh, we, I also paid a visit to Honda, Honda Corporation. Honda Corporation, yes. yes. We uh, held similar discussion that we held with uh, Toyota. First of all, I unveiled to them the uh, automotive master plan that the country is now uh, implementing. We're willing to embrace or know, implement 2013 to 2023. Okay. And uh, I gave them all the basic components of the plan and uh, I uh, create the indulgence to now increase you know, their portfolio investment in Nigeria and uh, to move away from importation of uh, uh, completely assemble, completely and manufactured the, uh, yes, motorcycles, motor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. completely manufactured uh, cars, and so on. But instead, to build them, build in, the manufacture plants, them in Nigeria, plants and manufacture them in Nigeria, mm. factories in Nigeria, so that we can be able to benefit from the richness of uh, uh, Japan in terms of automotive. Uh, we can take advantage of the. Uh, transfer of technology from Japan to Nigeria. So uh, that is in the area of automotive. Automotive, yes. But uh, as you are aware, uh, currently Nigeria is uh, uh, pursuing, you know, digitalization of uh, the economy in yeah. all ramifications. Yeah, yeah. To the effect that uh, a ministry of uh, telecommunic, a ministry of communication and the digital economy mm. has been uh, the established. In, okay. In 2019. Oh, and, really? Uh, yes. Mm. And currently, a, you know, a conscious uh, master plan 
of digitalizing the economy and all ramifications is currently being uh, pursued. We would love to under, see such master plan. Under, under, the par mm. under the purview of the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. Digital, digital economy yeah. Yes. So uh, the uh, the summary of it is that we want to improve. From we want we to do. achieve efficiency in way of doing business. Business, yes. We want to achieve efficiency in way of doing governance. We want to uh, eliminate and remove wastages. We want to reiterate the fact that uh, uh, we follow suit with globalization. Many countries, advanced countries, they are able to grow advanced because they have developed their economy along the path of digitalization. Exactly. And that is what Nigeria is currently pursuing. So I took a visit to NEC Corporation. You know, NEC Corporation is an important corporation. Yeah, it's a yeah. multinational company with, uh, one, headquarters, yes. with headquarters here in Japan. Yes. But uh, the subsidiary companies. We call, it, we call it NEC. Is that NEC? NEC. -E yeah, NEC. Okay. Yes. NEC Corporation. I know. With subsidiaries and the branches all over the all over the world, through other countries in the world, including Nigeria. They are. They are so they are big, big because. Companies. Because they are producers and manufacturers of semiconductors. Yeah. They are producers and manufacturers, original manufacturers of ICT components. Yes. And uh, they are also into uh, lots of uh, security, I mean production of security equipment for surveillance, for recognition in order to eliminate or to deal with uh, Computer, terrorism, computers and everything. Terrorism yeah. mm -hmm. and the insurgency. Yes, yes, yes. They yes. are very good in systematic the tracking and stuff like that. Equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I took a visit to them. Okay. And we had a discussion with their key staff, including even those who are in charge of Africa. And uh, I can remember one of the one of the persons we met with in charge of Africa was asked uh, to uh, leave South Africa and start coming to Japan so that he can participate in the meeting. In the meeting. Yeah. So, and uh, we are now trying to establish a partnership between NEC and the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. In Nigeria. In Nigeria. So that, because we see them as potential, uh, uh, as a Glo potential, global giant as a potential technology yes. company, company yes. that can facilitate and can fast track our uh, realization of our aspiration uh, of digitalizing the Nigerian yeah. economy. Yeah. So we are following this, uh, uh, you know, uh, logically to see that uh, that partnership uh, exists between Nigeria and uh, NEC. And uh, I visited also so many, several other companies, chief executives of uh, recycling companies, including that of uh, Natco, uh, for which uh, uh, we're just coming back uh, from the company now. Yeah. And uh, we visited uh, one other company again into, cycle, into recycling. Yeah. And uh, uh, these are things that we currently need in Nigeria. And uh, permit me to say that uh, uh, these are some of the things which uh, keep uh, the environment of uh, Japan very clean. Yes. Recycling. Very important. There is no wastage here in Japan. No. Everything you see, including tires, including cars, including refrigerators, uh, air conditioners, everything in terms of whatever it is, in the, including even plastic uh, materials. Everything. You hardly see anything on the street no way. as wastage. So today, I have been able to confirm that, yes, the secret behind it is recycling. Recycling, yes. And this is one thing that uh, Nigeria is not giving attention to. We throw garbage, we litter everywhere, we throw wastages everywhere, we keep heaps of uh, garbage everywhere, not, not knowing what we are going to do with it. Visit our uh, 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 government establishments, you see a lot of... Uh, uh, dead yes, cars, yes. a lot of people that are not working, not working, abandoned, and so on. We don't know that. These things can be recycled. I have seen it today. Yes, sir. Every part of uh, uh, a dead car, you know, it can be made to be usable. Exactly. Useful. We tract every raw material in them. Everything out of it can be useful. And they send it to generate including, electricity, yes. Including the copper in it, including yeah. the other metals in it. Everything about it everything. can be taken everything. out of it and yes. then recycled. <laughs> so, uh, we are in the process of uh, 
opening discussion with uh, chief executives of uh, recycling companies with a view to see how can they partner with uh, local uh, investors in Nigeria uh, for the establishment of recycling companies. Yes. So that uh, the raw material is there and the market is also there. Huge market. Huge market, you know. So uh, indeed, I have been visiting so many Thank you very much. of companies, yeah. but the idea is to keep track of these companies and see how many of them can we be able to woo to increase their volume of uh, business if they are already in Nigeria or if they are not there in Nigeria to get them to get interest, yeah. you know, in establishing businesses Thank in Nigeria. You. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm keenly interested to hear that you have great interest and you have discovered the importance of recycling yeah. today by yeah. visiting trade companies in Japan in Saitama Ken. Yeah, Saitama Ken. No, no, one yes. of them is my company, Navken yes. Associates, Navken PLC, Associates, yes. Japan. Yeah. And then you went further to visit a metal, a ferrous metal recycling ferrous company. Metal. Yes. Uh, Sakai Rishoten. In my presence, uh, a dead car. A dead car was, was, uh, uh, was uh, compressed was, uh, to the In three minutes. In three minutes. In three minutes. In three everything three minutes, about uh, it was compressed. Compressed. You know. so and from there, it is going it's to be going processed. processed immediately. So Any bit of copper in it would be Everything, extracted. even glass, will be even recycled. Even glass of it will be recycled. Yes. And the, 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 the things that we don't need, we now will incinerate them to generate electricity. That so that good. company's name is Sakairi Shoten. The director mm -hmm. that welcomed you today. Yes. And then we'll move forward to move uh, for you to see another company, a, a non-ferrous metal recycling company, mm -hmm. where even all the buildings that uh, you know we demolish, every cable, every uh, high rods and everything will be recycled. Mm -hmm. And that one is Koshigaya Metal. Mm -hmm. They welcomed you well. You. They promised to collaborate. Mm -hmm. The manager of that company, the director general of the company, mm -hmm. brought in his speech, yes. said he has experience. Yeah. And of you, he has agreed to your request yes. of uh, opening up a, a, a dialogue, yes. I mean, a kind of a system that will enable to negotiate yeah. on how they can establish such yeah. company. And your speech to him was so scholarly mm -hmm. that he is a cooperative friend. I mean, not only them bringing money, but other people will still invest in Nigeria and make sure you join JICA, JETRO into the system so that they will be very assured mm -hmm. of the whole thing. So your trip today, I, I say, is a, a very eye-opening one and a very successful one. Mm -hmm. And since I'm involved too, I will do whatever it takes to support your move. Thank you. Very yeah, much. to make sure the recycling system is established in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Um, the few questions we have uh, till the end of the question is, uh, you know, you inherited, let me use the word, you inherited being the ambassador of the Republic of Nigeria during the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we had our contingents here. What's your overall view of our performance? Brief, just your overall view well, you see, of the Nigerian uh, Olympians' performance. First and foremost, uh, Nigeria came to Japan for uh, Japan uh, Olympics 2020 uh, uh, in a very big way. Yeah. In a big way, if we if you take into consideration the contingent, the athletes, you know, uh, a large number and the number of uh, events that we participated, uh, Nigeria participated in a very big way. Yeah, I personally paid a visit to them at their camping site in Kisarazu, and I interacted with them. I saw them in higher separate, and later on the uh, honourable minister joined together with the permanent secretary of uh, Ministry of. Uh, uh, use and the sports development. So together with them, we have been following uh, the events closely and we have been monitoring. And uh, at the end of it, uh, Nigeria came up, uh, came uh, uh, victorious, victorious in the sense that uh, our, contingent, our contingents did not just go back empty-handed. Uh, they co participated in about uh, nine events, yeah. and uh, at the end of it, uh, they won two two medals. You know, one gold, I mean, one silver and one bronze. Yeah. But uh, what is important is that we came as one of uh, about fifty-three or fifty-four African countries, and uh, over two hundred uh, other countries also participated. Yes. And uh, many, many of the African countries, many, many of the other world countries 
they went back uh, empty-handed exactly. without any medal. Yeah. But the fact that Nigeria's name was inscribed on the medal table, and our national the flag that, risen the fact that above others, yes. The fact that the Nigeria's national anthem was sung yes. at the particular event where we exalted. That was a huge success a as huge far success. as Nigeria is concerned. Yes. And uh, that was why we hosted them, you know, to a reception at the embassy. They came to the embassy together with the Honorable Minister, and indeed even including the President of uh, Nigeria Olympic Organization, Organization yes, who yes. happened to be coincidentally a member of the uh, International Olympic, Olympic Organization, Organization Committee, uh, yeah. Engineer Abu Gume. Yeah. They were all there at the embassy. We uh, celebrated the medalists and uh, we held a reception for them. And uh, we delivered speeches appreciating them on behalf of uh, 200 million Nigerians. Yeah. So uh, I'm proud to be part of that process. I'm proud to be part of uh, the events. And uh, of course, we have some things that are very challenging to us. Many of our athletes were disqualified for one reason or another. But uh, the fact that uh, we came up uh, with name, uh, the contingents came up with, uh, you know, to make Nigeria proud, yeah. I feel so good. Yes, sir. And uh, secondly, thereafter, the Paralympics also was held. Yeah. I also visited them at, the, at their campus site. Yeah. They came, and uh, they came a large number. And uh, I charged them when I was uh, addressing them yeah. that I expected from them nothing from what they used to. They used to get uh, about four medals, yeah. all in all. Yeah. Any Paralympic event, including the one before the one they held here, okay. they secured four medals. <laughs> so I charged them, I was expecting it's at more. least those. And they promised that uh, they were going to secure more than that. And they did. And I was happy at the end of the Paralympics, about 10 medals. Wow. You know, about 10 medals were secured. So, uh, uh, Nigerian contingents, Nigerian Olympics, uh, Paralympics, they did uh, proud for Nigeria. Uh, we are proud to be part of that process. And uh, I personally, as the ambassador of the Federal Republic of Nigeria here in Japan, yeah. I am proud to be part of that process. I felt so good. I felt so happy that the name of Nigeria was uh, well represented. Yes. Well represented. And uh, uh, I'm so happy about that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our question before the last question. Mm -hmm. um, you, what, what was your plan on how to market Nigeria? Of course, you've, made me, you've hinted them on a private note, actually, in separate places. But do you have any plan of a kind of a business forum or bringing Nigerian, uh, Japan, Nigeria delegations to Japan to interact with uh, the, the uh, Japanese counterparts in the private sector of Japan. If any plan for that next year? Well, you see, uh, the relationship between Nigeria and Japan has been a bilateral one yeah. in the economy, in the trade, and the investment. And like I told you right from the beginning, it's part of my aspiration to move the trade volume between Nigeria and Japan to a bigger, a higher level, a more desired level and to increase the quantum of investment of uh, Japan into Nigeria in yeah. all ramifications, exactly. including portfolio investment, yeah. and uh, also to uh, make sure that the type of uh, cordial relationship, bilateral diplomacy that we enjoy between Japan and Nigeria, we uh, keep it consistent, Yes. we move it from where it used to be to a higher level. Yeah. Uh, Nigeria and Japan have been uh, bilateral uh, partners since, yes. uh, since uh, uh, 1960. Yeah. So you can imagine after about uh, six decades of uh, relationship, it's still growing. you can mm -hmm. imagine the extent to which, uh, and we are still growing, yes, certainly. and uh, we, are still, we are still keeping ourselves together. We have uh, benefited a lot from uh, you know, uh, multinational uh, interventions uh, coming from Japan and coming from Nigeria. Uh, of recent, uh, Japan secured uh, the uh, Director General seat of uh, International Postal Union. Yeah, Nigeria and, supported uh, that. We su Nigeria supported that, uh, uh, that venture. Yeah. We uh, not only supported, but uh, we went uh, extra mile 
to seek uh, the buy-in of uh, other countries that we can speak to. Yeah. And uh, we're happy to see that uh, at the end of it, exactly. the uh, candidate in you know, the field by Japan emerged successful. Good. And uh, uh, even before that, uh, Japan also uh, uh, you know, supported Nigeria, Nigeria when we failed a candidate of the World Trade Organization. Yes. World Trade Organization. So uh, it's, uh, it's we have been having that, and uh, we robust forward. diplomatic we relation look forward yes. to deepen it, exactly to strengthen it, exactly. and uh, to take it to a higher level. A higher level. Yeah, that is uh, what. Thank you very much, sir. Forward to. Thank you very much. Thank we we really appreciate your coming today, mm -hmm. Your Excellency, the Ambassador of Federal Republic of Nigeria to Japan. Ambassador Moriki, I always refer to you at Moriki as I have explained that name to you before, mm -hmm. Hussein Yambaka Moriki. Mm -hmm. Thank you really very much for honoring the invitation of NAFCONNECTS for Africa and the world to speak to the world from the diplomatic because we are the private sector and all we can do is to protect, defend the honor and glory of our country and at the private sector while you represent us at the diplomatic level. When we put this together, we will break the mountains. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation. At the mention at, in Japan, mm. when you mention Ghana, everybody's mind goes to cocoa. We we call it cocoa in in Africa, but they call yeah. cocoa here. Yeah. Um, I mean, when they say co Ghana cocoa. I mean, we want to know if cocoa is the only mineral resources that Ghana have. I want you to sell okay. Ghana here right now to let the world know the number of uh, minerals, the number of uh, essential okay. amenities that you can get in Ghana. To be quite honest, cocoa plays a very big part in our economy. Yes, I am aware of uh, that. Economy. And it has helped us uh, quite a great deal. And then I was are amazed to the extent of the Ghana cocoa um, appreciated on, uh, on the Japanese market. Seriously? Yes. And um, my first day of arrival at the airport, and I saw one of these uh, vending machines, and um, it had Ghana chocolates. Ghana chocolates, and yes. Was, which is very, very popular. Yes, yes, yes. I was it really... Admires it, yes. Yes, I was really taken back. And then uh, later on, I came to realize that uh, every year, almost over 300,000 metric tons of cocoa beans is uh, exported, imported in, into Japan, in this, this country. Wow. And I'm, I'm happy for that. I'm yeah. grateful to the Japanese people for appreciating the cocoa which has been produced in Ghana. In Ghana, yes. But cocoa is only forms only uh, one part of what Ghana have in terms of uh, endowment. Yes. You know, we can start, we have, we have a history. For most people, they, they used to know Ghana as Gold Coast. Yes, I wanted you to say that because mm -hmm. I didn't want to say, well, of course, as an African, as a Nigerian, of course, you know. In uh, those days in our country, mm -hmm. in Nigeria, people rushed to Ghana. Uh, it's because, called Gold Coast. Yes. Yeah, so right now, Cocoa has taken part. So what no, is happening to Gold? Unfortunately, uh, fortunately, no. Okay. Cocoa, Cocoa still plays a leading, a very major role. Yeah, okay. But... We export more in terms of, in terms of value gold than cocoa presently. So gold in terms of value exceeds cocoa. Cocoa right yes. now. Okay. And uh, Ghana at the moment, at the present moment, is the leading producer of gold in the whole of Africa. Ghana, we, Ghana we, is the leading producer of gold in the whole of Africa. Yes, we have a superseded uh, South Africa. Oh really? Yes, we have. We have. Some of the gold particles, do they come to Japan? Do they have some um, about them? Well, the Japanese do import a um, sensible amount of gold from Ghana. Okay. From Ghana. Wow. So Ghana, I think recently I discovered Ghana has uh, gotten oil. We, we, okay, let, let, oil. let me give you a little list, a little list. Okay, good. We have diamond. Diamond? We have iron ore. Iron ore. We have bauxite. Ghana still have bauxite? We have bauxite, huge quantity of bauxite. Wow. And we have manganese. Manganese? Yes, and we discover lithium. I, can, uh, I have a whole list of uh, various minerals 
which are available in Ghana. Definitely, we would love to have those lists so mm. that we can, when you are mentioning this, we put the list on the screen. Yeah, yeah. So that people, mm. you know, interested uh, mm. in the consultants mm. will uh, yes. still yeah. link the Ghana Embassy yes. for business, yes. So. At least we could refer to about 20 or so major minerals wow. in Ghana. Apart from gold, because from gold. to be honest, uh, we're out of touch, and the world might be out of touch. In Japan, they know, of course, I'm sure they might know uh, uh, cocoa and mm. uh, gold, but all the list of mineral resources that mm. you are mentioning right now, mm. probably they wouldn't know, and they can't even come to the Ghana Embassy to demand for it. So we need to expose these wonderful opportunities given to go about money. Yeah. Yes. And one of the major one, which was recently, even recently discovered, yeah. was lithium. A lithium. A lithium for the battery. I know, lithium ion battery, yes. yes and, for uh, the and hybrid and, course, yes. yes. And um, this was done with assistance of one of the major Japanese companies. Oh, really? Yes, the research, the prospecting was done by this company. And in 27, if, if you don't mind, you can mention the name if you know. It's a well, I, I do, but yeah. okay. for obvious reasons. Okay, good, good. Okay. <laughs> Very <laughs> <laughs> so you have left the private sector to join diplomacy. Uh, yes, of course, of course, yes. You know, diplomats often yeah. you don't talk anyhow. You don't yeah. really let the car out of the bag when yeah. it is not necessary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Mm. So, but it's a Japanese company that discovered the lithium. In yes, Canada. yes, yes, yes. Wow! Mm. Recently, yes, a large. It's going to be huge. It's it's vast. Mm. <laughs> One area alone, uh, it's estimated about twenty-three million tons. 23 million tons. metric tons of metric lithium. Tons, yes. Wow. Mm. And in the lithium ion battery is, is used in battery, and even the hybrid cars is something else right now. I well, the 21st century. Um, there are, I'm very happy that it is the Japanese company that discovered that. I'm, I'm all, I don't know why. I'm always keen to. Japanese uh, technology and uh, the way they do things, mm. actually. Probably mm. is because I've lived there for a long yeah. time. Yes, but once it's Japanese company that discovered it and they're doing it with Ghana, definitely there'll be a lot of uh, benefits by Ghana's place, I'm sure. Well, we hope so. We hope so. You know, we, so this wow. is the very beginning, so we will see how it will develop. Wow, so I didn't know I didn't know about lithium. So what of the oil, the, the crude? Are they still well, uh, extracting crude yes, in Ghana? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Offshore? Uh, offshore. Uh, okay, offshore. Okay. Most of the oil is offshore. Uh, yeah. We have a large quantity of gas. Okay, natural, liquefied yeah. natural gas? Yes, yes, yes. In Ghana now? Mm. So meaning Ghana is going to become the literal, uh, uh, what, 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 which country should I mention? I don't want to compare them with any country actually, but Ghana is... It's, it's, it's not, we don't produce as much as Nigeria. I know. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> We don't produce as much as Nigeria. I know, uh, but I know the less, not, I know we are not here to compare each country. No, 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 no. So I want to know what is in Ghana and let the world know yeah. that you, you are capable of taking them to Ghana. Yeah. To the right channel. That, that is our mission. That's our mission. Mm -hmm. To let the world know, not only Japan, world at large, that yeah, the ambassador here is welcoming you to Ghana to invest through the right people. The government will be aware of them. That, that's our mission. Well, it's, it's, it's part of the, the current government's policy. Yeah. We have a, a philosophy which is called Ghana Beyond Aid. Yeah, yeah. I think I have the president. Yeah, Ghana Beyond yeah. Aid. Yes. The whole concept is based on the fact that we must add value to our God given natural resources. Yes. And uh, we can do that. Take, for instance, a um, situation where iron ore will be extracted, put in a truck, 60 ton, 50 ton truck, and it will be driven all the way to the harbor, pour into a ship hold, and it leaves the country. Like that. It does not provide any job. Nothing. And then the weight of these vehicles damage the roads within a short period of time. Then we have to go out and borrow money. And import the same thing. The same thing again. That's, that, 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 that's absurd. So right? we are that's saying that our next level of development, if you really want to help Ghana or help any African countries, let's add a little value to our raw materials so that it will be a tax base for the government to derive income to maintain the economy, yes. to maintain the system. And, stop, having and, stop, and stop, stop borrowing bad loans. Exactly. Because... 
Let's look at economic history. There's no country which has become a, a, a great country, viable, viable yeah. nation state living purely on loans. No way. No. It, it just does not work. So we are asking that um, Japanese industries should come and have a look at what we have, look at the incentives which are in place to assist industries to come to Ghana. To, to Ghana, yes. And then we can come up to something to the, our mutual benefit. I like, I like the initiative. I think I listened to the Ghana president. Um, when there was a wonderful speech he made in France mm -hmm, mm. in the presence of a French uh, Macron. Macron. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that was scholarly. Yeah. Uh, it's in line with what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, Ghana, Ghana beyond aid. It should be Africa beyond aid. That should be the agenda. The, the whole, that, that's, that, yeah. the, the essence is, is that for the benefit of Africa in the yeah. long run. Exactly. Because it's a well-known fact that it's a, everybody accepted 40% of the world known mineral resources are still in Africa. It's more than that, Your yes. Excellency. Yeah. Yes, it's, yeah. it's, it's over 60%, I'm yeah. sure of that, yes. Well, yet, so, yet. so I, 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 we don't see why we should be so poor. Maybe the way we are going about it is, is wrong. And then we are saying that let's add value. Look, every year in March, April, you you read in the newspaper Jap Japanese capital investment yes. abroad, which means the monies which Japanese companies have invested abroad, and the, the returns which the Japan as a country has gained from it. Yes, we want to be part of that story. Exactly. We want them to come and have a look at Ghana and see what areas where they can invest. It's a, a win-win situation. Yeah, precisely. Yes. That, 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 I, I've always believed in one thing, that Africa must be developed by the Africans mm. in, in collaboration with the international community. We, we, this, this has always been my philosophy of mm. life, which has remained a pantheistic uh, determinism. I don't change them because we need to play a role. We need to draw the map. We need to ask them to come, okay, let us do this this way, and then create job for young exactly. graduates. Yeah, exactly. That's the most important thing. Yes. Not just when you dig gold and then you just take them raw back to China, you take them back to other countries. I mean, no. I mean, forty percent of the world known mineral resources are still in Africa. It's more than that, Your yes. Excellency. Yeah. Yes, it's, yeah. it's over sixty percent. I'm yeah. sure of that. Yes. Well, yet so we, so I, I, we don't see why we should be so poor. Maybe the way we are going about it is is wrong. And then we are saying that let's add value. Look, every year in March, April, yeah. you you read in the newspaper Jap Japanese capital investment yes. abroad, which means the monies which Japanese companies have invested abroad, and the, the returns which the Japan as a country has gained from it. Yes, we want to be part of that story. Exactly. We want them to come and have a look at Ghana and see what areas where they can invest it's a, it's a win win situation yeah, precisely yes that, that, that i i've always believed in one thing that africa must be developed by the africans mm. in in collaboration with the international community we, we, this, this has always been my philosophy of mm. life which has remained a pantheistic uh, determinism i don't change them because we need to play a role we need to draw the map we need to ask them to come okay let us do this this way and then create job for young exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's the most important thing yes not just when you dig gold and then you just take them raw back to china you take them back to other countries i mean no i mean Make sure we put them, I mean, into a very standard way, mm -hmm. create jobs there before it leaves to another uh, country for refining or whatever. Refine yeah, exactly. them, otherwise, refine them back in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I think Ghana has taken the lead. The image is growing seriously, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm 100% sure that with this space, yeah. Ghana is going to become, uh, yeah, of course, already is the hub of Africa right now. The, I think the hub well, is related know, to Ghana. We, we, we are, Economic hub. We are aiming for that role. Okay, but it's not yet. No, we are not. We are oh, not. really? You know, you know don't, don't forget, uh, we don't have the sizable population of uh, other countries. Yeah. Uh, but we have the resources, and then we are now because of it. Uh, but I think that hub should, be, should come to Nigeria, probably.
Uh, I will not. I will not. I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, we'll help each other. That's a point. That's what <laughs> We'll help each other. And, this uh, is great. <laughs> you know, we'll assist where you are good at. And exactly. We hope you do. Exactly. We do too. Yes. <laughs>